Uh, it's the nine most intriguing college basketball teams heading into the season, GP. And you start at number nine with Arkansas. Yeah, the Razorbacks in Fayetteville. This is a team that went 19-7 and last season with Isaiah Joe, not nearly as good without him. So uh, this was a borderline top 25 team when healthy. Now you get Isaiah Joe back, you enroll a top 10 recruiting class. Eric Musselman has a chance to take Arkansas to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1996. It's been a long time for that program to enjoy real success, but Mus, uh, he, he can maybe return them to that place in the 2020-21 season. We need the must bus back in the NCAA tournament just for uh, the cutaways. They're impressive and enjoyable. Number eight, UCLA. You know, there was a tough beginning to a first year for Mick Cronin in Westwood last season. They uh, did not get off to a good start, but they ended up winning 11 of their final 14 games, and they should return the top five scores from that team. It was unfortunate that the five-star uh, high school prospect, Dacian Nix, decided to join the G League program instead of enroll at UCLA. Uh, but the Bruins should still be really good, a factor at the top of the Pac-12. Number seven, the Texas Longhorns and Shaka Smart. Uh, Texas is a little bit like UCLA last season in the sense that it was bumpy for a while, but they got good down the stretch. They won five of their final six games, and they should return everybody from that team. Also enrolling a five-star forward named Greg Brown, who should be impactful right from the jump. This has a chance, at least on paper, to be the best team Shaka Smart has ever had at the University of Texas. Number six, you're talking UNC. You know, Roy Williams described last season as the toughest season of his head coaching career, and it's not hard to understand why. Tar Heels preseason top 20 ended up going 14 and 19, but they do bring back Garrison Brooks and Amanda Baycott. Uh, they enroll the number two recruiting class in America. They got three five-star prospects in that class, including Walker Kessler. If you were going to get your UNC jokes in, you should have done it last season because they're going to bounce back really strong in the 2020-21 season. Counting down to number one, we're at five, and you've got Iowa here. Iowa is awesome as long as Luca Garza withdraws from the NBA draft. You know, I talked to him late last month, and he acknowledged that he knows what he would be walking away from if he decided to walk away from Iowa under these circumstances. And what that is, is a chance to go to a Final Four and be the National Player of the Year. So I suspect he will withdraw from the draft, be back at Iowa, and then your Hawkeyes are undeniably the favorites in the Big Ten. How about number four, the Cavaliers? You know, Virginia's returning three starters from a team that closed with eight straight wins. They rank number one in the country in defensive efficiency. They get Sam Hauser, a former Marquette standout, eligible after he transferred from one school to the other. And so Virginia, check this out, has got a chance to be back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournament champions with a gap year in between because we didn't play the 2020 NCAA tournament. Tony Bennett can really absolutely add himself to the list of coaches who have won multiple national titles. A statistical anomaly that could only exist in 2020. But number three, Jay Wright and Villanova. Listen, they're losing Sadiq Bey to the NBA draft, and that makes a lot of sense. He's going to be a, a top 20 pick. But basically, everybody else should be back from that team that shared the Big East title. The Wildcats have an opportunity to win a third national title in a six-year span. And if it happens, Jay Wright would become just the seventh coach in NCAA men's basketball history to win at least three championships. He has already solidified his place in the Nason Memorial Hall of Fame, but he can really put himself in rare company if he's able to win the final game of the NCAA tournament for the third time. Unreal run for Jay Wright and the Wildcats. All right, number two, getting close to that number one spot. Baylor, sit here. You know, they should return the top three scores from a team that you know, spent part of last season ranked number one in the country, won more consecutive games as a Big 12 team than any team in Big 12 history. Jared Butler, as long as he withdraws from the NBA draft, is going to be a preseason first team All-American. So Scott Drew, I won't be surprised at all if he's able to lead the Bears to his first Final Four, and it will just be uh, the latest bit of evidence that suggests he has done one of the greatest rebuilding jobs in the history of not just college basketball, but college athletics. All right, we've waited. Number one, why is Gonzaga the most intriguing team heading into this season? Well, the idea that in a span of a couple of decades, 
uh, that program has gone from somebody that would be a buy game for a power conference program to one of the true powers in the sport, I, I think is overlooked too often. Like what Mark Few and that administration has done to get to this point, just really, really impressive. And now, um, as long as Philip Petrusha returns uh, to Gonzaga after withdrawing from the NBA draft, this is a team that's going to return three of the top five scores from a team that went 31-2 and two last season. They're also enrolling a top 15 recruiting class headlined by five-star guard Jalen Suggs, and it's why the Zags, they've been to the Final Four, they've played for a national championship. They should be, as long as everybody who can returns does return, the favorite to win the 2021 NCAA tournament. And wow, what a story that would be.